Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Craig Blanchett, and I'm a um, certified optimal health coach, and it's my uh, pleasure uh, to bring you this weekly installment. We call this the Healthy Huddle. And if you think about um, uh, health in it from a perspective that we're healthier when we're together, then you can think of sort of being on a healthy team. And what do teams do? They huddle up. So that's why we have the healthy huddle each week, uh, 6 to 6.30. Um, for those of you that are listening to this, at, at 6.30, we actually are going through Dr. A's Habits of Health one chapter at a time. Um, this week's uh, is chapter 12. Um, healthy eating for life, your transition to permanent health. So if you want to um, stick around for that at the bottom of the hour, or if you're watching this on um, on uh, recording, you'll see uh, the next one in the list of recordings will be that one. Uh, but tonight, as usual, um, we, we're going to spend a few minutes and uh, introduce um, anybody that's been here for the first time. And so your two questions are, what's your name, uh, where you're from, and who invited you? And so let's start out with that, and then we'll go uh, switch over to, we've got a recipe, and then we'll do a little overview of the chapter. So who's on for the first time tonight? I think Linda, yep. All right, or Diane, excuse me. Diane, uh, so I guess I know your name because it says Diane right there, but uh, <laughs> where are you from, who, and who invited you? Um, I'm from San Diego, and Alex invited Alex. me. Got it. Yeah. And so what's your, um, are you, have you, tell us a little, a little bit about your journey so far. Uh, um, have you started the five and one? I think you've started again. I know about some of your story, but none of these other people yeah. do. So I, have, I was on it be, uh, briefly. Um, and then I uh, went off and got back on it on April 1st and have had phenomenal results. I've lost close to, I don't know, 12 pounds since the since april 1st oh wow yeah i really stuck with it i yeah. I, I use a lot of focus and determination so that yeah. i can achieve my goal yeah yeah great job I'm well, happy. You, yeah good job it's inspiring for us the um one of the things uh we can lose the weight we've all done that right um, keeping it off is really the where the magic is and so that's one of the reasons why we have this um, forum each week is to pretty much remind us about the things that we already know and inspire us to continue doing those and so um, you're welcome to join us each week here and and uh, actually I would encourage you to do that because not only I think you'll need us but I think we need you thank you yeah it's a two-way street so Glad to have you. Thank you. All right. And it looks like we've got a bunch of veterans here, but um, I, I'd love to hear uh, just because Diane's here for the first time, Jim, maybe you can just give a, us an update on how you got here and where you're at in your journey. Yeah, I came. Uh, Murray's my coach, and um, I got invited probably eight months ago, and I uh, got down to 227, so I lost – almost 80 pounds um i put on a little bit weight now i'm i'm back fully um losing weight again so mm -hmm. as well as my wife yeah you're not losing your wife she's no, just no. losing weight yeah nope. <laughs> i'm losing weight as well as my wife that's terrible <laughs> yeah great job jim it's um you know and that's a testament too because health is not a static thing it's something that happened, you know, we have ebbs and flows and uh, I love to see you back and engaged again and moving forward. So welcome. Now it looks like Monica, um, Ponica, maybe, Ponica, looks like you're on for the, maybe the first time you're still working on getting your audio set. So we'll give her a minute to try to get that set. Um, Alex, is that one of your guests by chance? Um. It is not directly. It may be indirectly. Is it somebody else's guest? Not that I know of. Checking. I'm. I'm. Um, I invited some folks over who were going to invite some of their friends to join us tonight. So, Got it. been a lot of excitement going on lately. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are inspired to to pay it forward. And something that you said to me today, Craig, that I want to just share with everybody is um, people 
are looking for something and what they need for us to be is for real. <laughs> they need us just to be us and say, hey, this is working for me. Come in and check it out and see what we're about. It's that simple. Yeah. And uh, so I think there's a lot of folks that are doing that more and more nowadays. Yeah. So in the chat window, um, I just posted, that's for later. I mean, you can click on that and you can um, just save the, the spot or you can even click on save, um, save chat. But uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, this has the recipe that we're going to go over tonight. And um, I've got Stephanie um, that's with us as well. And she's going to um, basically talk through uh, this. So this is the simple spaghetti squash skillet. And when I saw this picture, I said, yummy. That looks like something I kind of want. And I want it probably tonight, maybe. And so, um, so Steph, if you'll, if you'll kind of walk us through this a little bit, and if you have any, um, I mean, it's a pretty simple recipe, but one, you know, is this a difficult one, an easy one? Or are there any gotchas on it or tips that maybe aren't in the instructions you can share with us? Star six will unmute yourself as well. Let's see here. Oh, looks like maybe we lost her. I don't know. No, there she is. I'm she. here. Oh, there you are. Yep, yep. So it um, looks like some pretty basic ingredients here. Uh, of course, your spaghetti squash. Now, do you have spaghetti squash kind of around regularly just as a staple? Or I notice a lot of your recipes use spaghetti squash. Um, I have it around a lot, and I take it a lot with me even when I go places because it's, I think it's so amazing how great it tastes when you add the right ingredients with it and to help people realize that they don't need those noodles, mm. that they can enjoy something that's just as delicious as noodles. And by itself, it's kind of bland. And, you know, they always tell you to cook it in the oven. But that takes longer and really and truly if you just poke it and put it in the microwave for five to ten minutes it's soft enough you can cut it you can shred it and then it's quick you know you come home from from work if you have a hamburger sausage you know this recipe calls for ground beef but um, any of the above and some spaghetti squash um, even if you don't have all of these ingredients you can basically put this recipe together tweaking it a little bit here and there with, you know, different spices or, you know, whatever form of canned tomatoes you have in the cupboard, even if it's tomato sauce, will still make it taste good. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mainly just, you know, mixing some spices and some meat and some sauce with that spaghetti squash. And then, you know, most recipes um, and then basil just, oh, it, it makes spaghetti squash so yummy. And a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. You haven't added any calories or carbs. You've just added some extra amazing flavor. And your dinner's ready. Yeah. I mean, you can... Now, on just, this son, could you, like, if you didn't... Let's say all you had was salsa in your uh, pantry and, and you didn't have, like, any of the spaghetti sauce or stuff, could you just throw salsa with some of the bet. lettuce and stuff? You bet. Okay. Well, actually, it's not. There's no lettuce in this. Oh, it's just it's just spaghetti sauce, meat, tomatoes, or salsa. Salsa works great, and some spices. Hmm. Got it. Yeah, in the picture, it looks like there's. I don't know if that's basil. Maybe. Looks I like think something. that's basil. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So it looks pretty simple, and um. And it's even got some mushrooms in it. Mushrooms are like if you keep you know spaghetti squash and mushrooms. And salsa and, you know, some, some form, even if you just have canned chicken in the cupboard, it works and it's still yummy mm -hmm. and healthy. Yeah, perfect. So while we have Steph on the phone here, does anybody want to unmute and maybe ask a specific question about one of the ingredients or about the prep time or anything like that? We can, um, we can take advantage of her expertise. Who's got a question about this recipe tonight? I have a question for Steph. Um, so first off, Steph, I really appreciated you providing so, such amazing recipes over the four and a half years that I've known you. Um, 
this is a great thing. And one thing I love about this team is that we have people on here like you. So where do we find more of your recipes and things like this? Well, basically all you have to do is ask. I don't have them anywhere in particular. Uh, I tried a few different times to do that and it didn't really work out. So most of the time people will just email me and when I first get the email, I will send them at least five or six so they have enough to get started for a couple of weeks and then I send one out every week. When do you, where do you go to find your recipes? That might be a, a place to go oh, as well. Lots of, lots and lots of different places. Yeah, I know Sandy's <laughs> Kitchen is one Sandy's that I've kitchen. seen. Sandy's Kitchen is amazing. It's great. Um, I got tired of Sandy's Kitchen because, I mean, you know, I pretty much either tried every recipe on there or didn't care for some of them. Uh -huh. And um, a lot of times I just Google, you know, lean and green, and all kinds of coaches have lots the recipes and stuff and then if i'm not sure that it's compliant for the lean and green i'll send it to nutrition support because i do want to make sure that people know the amount of servings and i want to make sure i haven't got too many spices in it and i just want to make sure that it's not going to get them in trouble and um so if, you know, you, if, that, if they see one of your recipes and it says approved it means you've run it by com uh the nutritionists and make sure yes yeah. yep yeah, they Actually, all know. The I, I, I send out every week always are approved. Yeah, I um I talked with some of the nutritionists at one of the conventions, and they they know my mom. Stephanie's my mom. They know her by by first name. They're, oh yeah, Stephanie. Yeah, we know her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, feel like we're like, I, I feel like we're here on a family health mafia meeting. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> we're getting healthy. Deal with it. All right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, anybody else have any questions about that? Uh, about this particular recipe? Oh, looking forward to making it. Yeah, exactly. One thing I would want to challenge you guys to do, and, and anything, the things that take effort, hard things usually have value. Um, they'll either be teaching you value or they'll be accomplishment value. And so think about this, that concept that oftentimes the harder something is, sometimes the more value. Think about diamonds versus rocks. You know, you got rocks in your backyard, but diamonds are really hard to find, right? And so they're worth a lot more than a bucket of rocks, right? And so if you think about doing hard things, one of the hard things that, that, I encourage you to do is try a new healthy recipe every week. You're like, well, it's going to be a little bit of work. Well, sure. But eventually, here's the payoff. You're going to learn to replace all of your current recipes with healthy, healthy versions or new recipes that re you replace out your old non-healthy recipes. And what if it takes you six to eight months of trying one recipe every week until you found some that you just love that are easy, healthy, and not to mention tasty. Easy, healthy, tasty, right? Yeah. If it's not easy, you're not going to do it very often. No, Craig, I, I find that tasty. people are often afraid to serve something healthy when they have family over or something. They think they're going to let people down. Yeah. Um, but when you do this kind of stuff, and not in San Diego so much for you guys there, but, but everywhere else in the world, yeah. Um, they, like what happens is, um, I, I, I watch people's faces. Um, what happens is when you make a good lean and green meal, like my in-laws, they come over and they go, your food always tastes so good. And I'm sitting there going, you guys don't even know if you ate more like that, you'd be in fat burn and all that. So I've now started educating my uh, mother-in-law about, lean and green recipes and as much as I won't go into the details she's kind of hooked on this way because she feels so good after she eats here and she says even her husband she goes you know Papa Ted he would never have eaten that but he doesn't know I use turkey or chicken instead of like this beef and he's actually come to like these things better and I think it's because he feels better mm, brilliant yeah well that's the benefit there if we can have something that tastes great and we feel great afterwards, why wouldn't we do that all the time? And I think the answer to that, well, actually, let's go ahead and I want to toss that out to you guys. Why do you think we don't, we don't do that? We do go well. for tasty, <laughs> tasty over healthy. Why do you think that main reason is? I don't know. How about you, Debbie? I don't know if you're available. I noticed you're not on uh, 
you're on mute. Or, or Linda. No, no, I'm here. You're here. I'm here. I'm just I'm trying to make dinner for my son. Oh, at the same of dinner. Time. Yeah. So yeah. You, did you hear the question? Yes, I did. Yeah. And, what do you think? Um, why people choose taste over tasty over, over healthy? Health. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, you know, I think this really, as far as I'm, as far as me, it's you've ne you just haven't tried it. Yeah. I just haven't done it, and and you don't realize how good food it, it is, mm -hmm. and it's always fun with these recipes and stuff when you play with it, and after eating it, you're just going. Dang, that was so good. <laughs> yeah, why haven't I always <laughs> eaten that? Yeah, so what exactly. your answer is exactly it. It's just because we don't have familiarity with it. Because the way that we find familiarity with foods is usually what mom made, right? And so we became familiar over time. So think of what we're cha this challenge is sort of a become familiar with the challenge. Because once you're familiar with, for example, this spaghetti squash, and it's just something that you have in your repertoire. You can make it by heart. It's just something you do. And now you don't sack or you don't settle. You don't settle for only tasty and not healthy because, you've, because you know more. You're familiar. So I want to take out that mystique, but there's going to be a little bit of, um, of um, is the effort worth the outcome? And so I have to think about that. This will be just as tasty, but I'm going to feel great afterwards, and it could end my yo-yoing habits. I don't know about you, but that sounds like worth a try. So anyway, well, that's going to conclude. Anybody else have any? I have a couple comments just about some, some um, sort of staples that I have in my fridge all the time that I add to different things for specific reasons. But anybody else have any uh, comments about the recipe before we move on? Okay. So a couple things. The other day I was, I ha was having some cereal and the cereal was pretty, um, it was pretty good, uh, but it was slightly, uh, it was a protein cereal um, by Special K. And it had a f like, I don't know, I think 18 carbs and 12 proteins. So it wasn't quite even. And so I have almond milk. Well, almond milk, the blue diamond almond milk is two and two. So it's perfectly glycemic neutral, but it didn't give me extra protein. So it was like a wash. And so I was thinking, what could I do to add a little bit more protein to this? Well, I have some Fage or Faye, excuse me, Greek yogurt. And so I added like two clumps of that in with my cereal. And I knew I added probably, I don't know, 20 grams of protein in there. And so immediately I took the cereal that was pretty close, pretty good, and, w and added a little bit of protein on it. And, you know, it adds a, a nice flavor to it. Um, and so I have, as a standard practice, the Faye yogurt. Um, I have, as a standard practice, uh, mozzarella cheese on hand. Um, as a standard practice, we have um, uh, like uh, cauliflower. You can actually get already riced cauliflower now um, at Winco, at Fred Meyer, at Walmart. It comes at lots of places. Even uh, Trader Joe's has it. And so that can be a base for stir fries, for lots of different things. So those are a couple of little things. And when you start to learn some of these tactics, you know, we don't have rice in our house. We have cauliflower rice. We don't have noodles. We have spaghetti squash. Or we'll use um, coleslaw or cabbage. We steam cabbage, and we put spaghetti and meatballs over the top of steamed cabbage. Super simple. For me, I'm the kind of guy, I'm a three-ingredient guy, right? If it's more than three ingredients, I'm probably not going to make it. You know, another one that I've told you guys about, ground beef, green beans, salsa. Can't go wrong, baby. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is a meal, and it's about 20 minutes, and it's ready to go. So um, anyhow, um, so I'm going to give a little um, – well, actually, anybody, any comments about some things maybe that you've done that are sort of those healthy alternative staples that maybe you've, uh, you have in your cupboard or, or refrigerator? Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, I just want to say when I come over to your house for dinner, I'm doing the cooking, my friend. Okay. No, oh, just, just so we're clear. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, and I'm a prepared and willing. Yep. Um, Debbie, you had your hand up. Uh, I'll unmute you. There you go. Thank you. Yep. Um, I had a question. Yeah. When you were saying that you added the protein, now this is just for my own health journey here. Yeah. And um, is you added the extra protein. Now, you're not putting that in the cereal. You're just eating it on the side because I've thought about that as like doing something where if I'm eating a yogurt that's that's got probably a net, carb effect of the protein and carbs uh, of about four grams. So I'm, I'm going up. So in order to eat it, um, level it out, or actually I should use the example of like, probably this probably isn't the best low glycemic fruit, but watermelon, and then having like a hard boiled egg with it mm -hmm. to kind of try and offset it a little. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that when you say about the yogurt, you're kind of doing, it's not necessarily with it, but it could be yeah. eaten at the same time? Yeah, I get your question. Um, I think there's something to that. It definitely would help, but I, I'm, I don't know exactly how much. I did actually add it in the cereal, but whether you had it separate or in it, it still goes in your stomach at the same time. So I don't know that it matters. But Alex, do you have sort of that... Um, yeah, well, there's two layers of, of communication I think that are important. One is to understand somebody who's in fat burn versus somebody who's in maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about is somebody who's maintaining their weight, messing with yogurt and fruit, right? Um, right. which is great because yogurt and fruit is a wonderful thing for health when you're looking to kind of maintain that or you're taking a break from fat burn or whatever reason. So let's just clarify that for those of you who are in fat burn, five and one, mm -hmm. this is kind of some stuff to know down the road, right? So then to answer your question, um, first off, uh, when you combine, no matter if you combine them out of the body or you eat them within five to 10 minutes of each other, they are going to balance out your blood sugar uh, together because they're going to work in the stomach together. And so I'll leave it. If you want a more detailed answer than this, then just uh, look at your Habits of Health book in chapter six. It explains this. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a little to this, or you can call nutrition support and they can get on the phone or send you an email. Okay. 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 But just understand this. That when you have a food that is high glycemic, it converts into sugar very easily in the body. And when you have a food that's low glycemic, it converts into sugar very slowly in the body. It takes a longer time to metabolize. When you have a food that is like, let's say zero on the glycemic index, which there really aren't any foods like rocks would be zero. Okay. And then you have a food that's a hundred and you combine them together, you get like a 50 or 60 when you combine them. They like, they, they work with each other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, being specific to Debbie, um, yes, if you were eating something like watermelon and you ate a hard boiled egg with it, you're gonna take that watermelon from like a 60 down to probably like a 40, okay? But if you want more um, or you're in maintenance, you know, like I said, I gave you those resources you could look into. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. And yes, I am. I'm in maintenance right now. Perfect. I'm doing like the three and three right now. Excellent. So, so, okay. Thank you. Yep. Good, to hear, good, to hear, good to hear your voice and see you briefly, Debbie. I'll be on the next one with my video, not David Bowie. For some reason, I don't know why I can't get rid of that picture. No, it looks like <laughs> you. It's you uh, in this one. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to touch on chapter 12 just a little bit. And if you guys want to hang around for the next segment, basically, uh, chapter 12 talks about transitioning to permanent health or uh, what we call um, living in a healthy body after you've lost your weight. And so, um, Dr. A talks about something called B Slim, and there's five segments of B Slim. Um, breakfast stands, is what the B stands for. Exercise is the E, support is the F, low-fat, low-glycemic meals every three hours. That's the L. Um, I is for individualized plan because everybody has a uniqueness to their life and the things that they want. And the M stands for monitor, always to monitor yourself. Get on the scale once a week. Take some measurements once in a while. Get a pair of pants that you know that fits. And if they start getting tight, you know something, you're probably having a little too much watermelon or something, a little too much of this or that. Um, anyway, so we're going to go into a little bit of that more, but um, 
the uh, there's a, a few keys as well. Um, energy balance, ba balancing what comes in and what goes out, yeah, and having the proper motivation is really really important. That you're focus on focusing on what you desire, moving towards it instead of what you what causes you pain and trying to get away from that. And so, um, so that's just a little taste about moving into transition, um, making sure you're living the B Sim lifestyle, and you're focusing on those uh, six, uh, five different aspects, as well as um, understanding how many calories are coming in, how many calories are going out. A really great resource is if you go to tsfl.com slash optimal health tsfl.com slash optimal health there is a um, um, chart in there that you can calculate your calories that you'll need on a daily basis and then it even gives you some meal options that you can um, uh, kind of have as an example of what to do after you've lost your weight because if we don't focus on what to do after we lose our weight then we'll gain it and then we'll lose it again and then we'll gain it and we'll lose it and we'll gain it and we'll pretty much do that the rest of our lives um, but if we really figure out how to live at a healthy weight, we can actually live inside a healthy body. And so uh, that's going to conclude this first portion tonight. So thank you all for joining.